Hi, does this book bring back memories of late night coding marathons for 1980s computer science classes? Do you remember when the thought of recompiling your code multiple times as part of the debugging process was unheard of due to hours long waits on shared servers for a single compile? Do you remember when compiling programs in seconds was crazy talk? Well, this video is about an amazing compiler that could be purchased by the average person. Borland's Turbo Pascal. Hello, I am the Mighty Pez. In this video, I will be setting up and demonstrating Borland's Turbo Pascal on a small CPM single board computer using ANSI terminal emulation. So please, join me To get Turbo Pascal loaded onto this single board computer, we will follow the same processes that I went into in much more detail on my previous video, getting started with CPM 2.2 on the MinZ Tiny computer. If you want more detailed explanation, please watch that video. I will quickly run through all of the steps. We'll be storing Turbo Pascal on the C drive, going through the different user areas we can see that user2 is the first empty area. Reminder that there is no method to copy files between user areas until we have pip or the peripheral interchange program saved into user2's area. We will return to user0 where our utility files are located. Run then exit out of pip which will leave pip in memory return to the user2 area then we save 58 blocks of memory to the file called pip.com leaving the pip command available for use from user area 2 from here we can leverage pip to pull other files from user 0 using pip we pull the pc git utility into user area 2 Now we have the ability to transfer files from my PC to the MinZ computer. There are six files that are important for a minimal install of Turbo Pascal. Three files for Turbo Pascal development environment, turbo.com, turbo.msg, and turbo.ovr. And three files for the Turbo Pascal installation and configuration tinst.com, tinst.dta, and tinst.msg. Using the X modem processes detailed in the last video, we will transfer these six files. I have downloaded the two disk set of Turbo Pascal 3.01 for CPM80. This is a very critical step is neither the x86 DOS version or CPM86 versions will work on the Z80 processor. However, if you are working on CPM86, the rest of this configuration video will still be applicable. Now that Turbo Pascal is copied to our system, let's go ahead and run it. We will go ahead and open a test file. Right away we notice that the screen display is garbage and not exactly a usable full screen editor. We also notice that the cursor keys produce garbage. This is due to the fact that unlike a DOS PC, there is no standard CPM display and we need to configure the terminal emulation support for Turbo Pascal. In our case, we will be configuring Turbo Pascal to support an ANSI standard terminal emulator. We will use the tinst utility that we downloaded with Turbo Pascal. 
selecting S for screen installation. Then we select option 6 for the ANSI style terminal supported by our TerraTerm emulator. Now we restart Turbo and already things look much better. Editing a test file, we can see that the terminal now provides full screen support. However, cursor key support is still not available. So back to tinst. This time we select command installation, which will provide keyboard support. As we are presented with the cursor functions that we wish to modify, we will press the key that we use for each function. For example, when prompted for character left, we push the left cursor key on the keyboard and the correct cursor sequence appears. We will hit enter and go through the rest of the options before exiting. Now we go back to the Turbo IDE, edit a file, and let's test our cursor keys. Things look much better. Exiting Turbo, we see our next issue. The screen is not reset. So back to the tinst utility. This time, after selecting the ANSI terminal type, we will choose Yes to modify the definition. Hit Return until we reach the option for the reset string. Then we will enter in the decimal codes 27 and 99, which represent an escape, lowercase c, sequence. Finish hitting return until we get to the end. Notice that Turbo Pascal asks us for the clock speed of our system. 20 MHz is the largest option because in a world of 4 and 6 MHz systems at the time, who would possibly need more than 20 MHz? After exiting, we restart the IDE, exit out, and now Turbo clears the screen and resets the color back to the default. Now we are ready for some heavy 1980s era coding sessions. Now that we've configured the escape sequences for the keyboard and screen, we can demonstrate a little bit of uh, Turbo Pascal's development environment. Go ahead and get into Turbo. At this point we can edit files. I've gone ahead and already coded up a quick demonstration program calculating pi. Again you can see that the keyboard escape sequences work, screen scrolling is working, um, everything looks good. So I'll go really quickly over this demonstration program. I'm this program will be uploaded to my GitHub page. It will calculate pi uh, using the uh, Leibniz formula, uh, which is pretty simple. Uh, it's just an infinite series. You take the number 4 minus 4 thirds plus 4 fifths minus 4 sevenths, and you continue that pattern forever. Uh, again, it's an infinite sequence. The denominator will just increase by 2 every sequence and continue on uh, the odd numbers. So down here is a simple program. It'll just set up a loop that will go 31,000 iterations. It will go and if it's a odd iteration it will subtract 4 over 
the denominator. If it's an even iteration, it will add 4 over the denominator and just continue to do this until it hits the max iteration. Uh, limiting factors for this program include the fact that uh, Turbo Pascal was written in the 80s and uh, the integers are limited to uh, 32,767 as well as the real numbers are only 48-bit values and therefore cannot handle anything more than about 10 significant digits. Go ahead and escape out of the editor. Uh, the control sequence is controlled KD. We'll compile. By default, Turbo Pascal is compiling in to memory. Uh, if we want to compile to an object or to an executable file, we need to uh, set the compiler options. Uh, we can do that by O for options, and our options are memory, com file, and a chain file. I set the compiler option to compile to a file. So we'll quit out of the compiler options back to the main menu. We'll compile to a file. You can see it compiled to mypy.com. So we'll quit out of Turbo Pascal. We see that we do have a mypy.com executable. We'll go ahead and execute that. And it will run the calculation for pi estimating the value of pi. After 31 iterations in about 12 seconds, we have our approximation of pi correct to nine significant digits. Although we will not break any pi digit calculation records, we have successfully demonstrated the ability of a popular 1980s compiler IDE functioning on a modern 8-bit system. And I now have Pascal in addition to Microsoft Basic and Z80 Assembly as an option for developing code for this system. In this era of gigahertz desktops supporting each user, it must be remembered that before the PC era, many computers such as Data Journal Novas and Eclipses were supporting dozens of concurrent users with a single 1.5 to 5 megahertz CPU. And even PC compilers were very expensive and had extremely slow multi-pass processes. Turbo Pascal came on the scene with a blazing fast and very affordable product, and as such was widely used in the educational arena. I will provide configuration notes and source code from this video on my GitHub page. A link will be provided in the description. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was informative and maybe we'll create interest in experiencing some cutting-edge 1980s technology.